Have you ever had to work with a completely unruly folder with different file types like R scripts, Excel spreadsheets, reports, Cordo, or R markdown files? These files all have different uppercase and lowercase, different delimiters like dashes, underscores, spaces. This can make it very hard to navigate your folder to find a file that you really need. What if I were to tell you that there's actually a way to automate this process, rename and reorganize all of these files so that they're in a very consistent format and organized in nice subfolders so that you can easily find an R script in an R folder or your data files that are CSV or Excel in a folder called data. Consider how much time you could save instead of having to manually rename all of your files, create different subfolders, and then move those files into the appropriate subfolder. In this video, we're going to demonstrate how we can use the FS package to automate this entire process and make our lives just a little bit easier. Let's get started. Today we'll be using two packages. The first is FS, which is what we will use to create new folders and files, rename them, copy or move them, as well as delete any folders and files when we're done with our demonstration today. The second package is string R, which we will use to change the old file names into new file names that have consistent case and delimiters. We'll be using kebab case or all lowercase with dashes to delimit between words and numbers. To demonstrate the power of FS for efficient file management, we'll need to create a file folder to play around in. We'll be using the dir underscore create function and inside we'll put in the file path and directory name. In this instance, currently, I am in this FS file management folder and I'm going to create a new directory called FS example. If I run this line of code, we can see in our files pane down here that we now have an empty FS example folder. Programmatically, we can also check to see if this file exists by running dir exists. It prints out that path and marks it as true meaning that it does exist. Next, we'll create some poorly named files. As you saw in this intro to the video, we have some CSV files, a couple of R scripts, and some Cordo and PDF report files. Let's first create a vector called files. If we hop over to our environment pane, we can see that we just have a character vector of these file names. Then we're going to use this file underscore create function Again, we're going to pass in the folder path and name. We are working in the FS file management folder and in our subfolder called FX example, we want to create all of these files that were in this files vector. If I hop over back to our files, we can see that we're in this FS file management folder and then the FS example subfolder, and there's nothing in here. but if I run file create, now you can see that we have all of these files. You can also see that they're all empty because we haven't saved anything yet. If I were to save some just random text in this analysis.r file and then run file create, it's not going to do anything. It's not going to overwrite what was currently in that file. There's this built-in safety so that we're not overwriting our directories and files. The safety feature also works in the dir create function where we already have this FS example in our FS file management folder. If it didn't have this safety feature and I ran dir create again, this FS example could be blank as it overwrites with just an empty folder, but it's not blank. We still have all of our existing files. Now, I'd also like to demonstrate one of my favorite functions from the FS package, which is creating a directory tree. We saw an example of the directory tree in the intro to this video. If you run dir underscore tree 
and then pass in your folder name, then you can see this really nicely formatted and printed directory tree. So it prints up here that we have our FS file management folder and FS example subfolder. Our R scripts are in green. All of the other file types are in white. We don't have any subfolders here. Later, we'll see an example of what it looks like after we've cleaned up these file names and organized them into appropriate subfolders. Now it's time to clean up our files. We'll want to get rid of all of this messy mixture of uppercase, lowercase, spaces, underscores, and make it consistent like kebab case, which I personally use for my work. We're going to want to get our file path and names. If we see what dir ls is, it's going to return the file name as a special fs underscore path character vector. This is going to include the whole path to the files. Originally in our files vector, these are just the names, but these don't include the file path. If we list our files and the old names with the dir ls function and then look at files old, you can see that we actually have the whole path to our files. Now we can use some functions from the string r package in order to standardize the file names into a new vector and include the kebab case formatting where we have all dashes instead of spaces and underscores. We're also making everything lowercase. If we run this code chunk and then look at our files new names, we can see that everything is lowercase and all of the spaces and underscores have been replaced with dashes. If we go back to our file panes, you'll notice that this didn't do anything to our actual file names. So far, what we've done is just create a couple new vectors. So if I hop over to our environment pane, we have the files new and files old. We're going to use the file move function from the FS package in order to actually rename those old file names with these new file names. So the file move function takes the old names first and then the new names. And this function also would work if you weren't renaming things and actually just wanted to move files as well. Going back over to our files, if I run file move, you can now see that all of our file names have been updated so that it's all lowercase and it's all hyphens or dashes instead of the spaces and underscores. If we also run the dir list again, we'll get another peek here of the new file names with the whole file. Next, we're going to create some subdirectories. Instead of having just one massive behemoth folder of R scripts, CSV files, and your PDFs and, and Cordo documents all in one top level folder, we can have a nicely organized folder structure. First, let's create the subdirectories. We want to have all of our R scripts in an R folder. We want our CSV files in a data folder and our QMD and PDF in a reports folder. So similar to the creation of those different files with file create and a vector of the file names, we're going to do the same process, but with these directories and the dir functions. We're going to have this sub dirs vector of our data and reports. And then we're going to create a new directory. If we run this and then look over at our files pane, we can see that we now have our data and reports folders. They're all empty so far because we haven't moved anything yet. In order to move our files into those folders or subdirectories, we're going to again use that dir ls function with our file path to our fs example folder. We're going to use this thing called a glob which if we look at the help file for dir list, we can see what is a glob? It's a wildcard, aka globbing pattern, 
passed on to grep to filter paths. So this basically is similar to regex or regular expressions, but it's very specific to file paths. We're going to say that we want for the R files, any file name, but it ends in .r lowercase. This pipe symbol means or. If there are any new files in here that didn't get renamed, that we're also moving the capital .r files. We're going to do this for the CSV files and move those into data files and then .qmd and .pdf into reports. Let's run this chunk and then we can just take a quick peek. Our files, there are two scripts, data files are our CSVs and our reports are these PDFs and QMD files. So far, all we've done is set up for the file move function. We haven't actually moved our files yet. If we hop back to our files pane, we can see our data is still empty. R is still empty and reports is still empty. We need to use the file move function to actually move all of the R files into the subfolder called R, move all the data files into the subfolder called data, and lastly, move all the reports into the subfolder called reports. Now notice in our files pane, we have no loosey-goosey files if we open each of our folders, our data has our CSV, our R folder has our R scripts, and our reports has our very important reports in the QMD and PDFs. If we wanted to programmatically check and make sure that everything is as expected, we can call dir tree again. Now you can see that in our FS file management, FS example subfolder, we now have this directory tree that is broken up into these different branches for each subfolder. We have our R subfolder with our R scripts, our data subfolder with our CSVs, and our report subfolder with our PDFs and QMD files. It's always good practice to just clean up after a demonstration. We can use this helper function to check if a folder exists. It does exist. We see this FS example. And then we can delete it. And if I go back to FS file management, that FS example is no longer there. To again, programmatically check that, we can do dir exists. And now it says false. We've successfully deleted our FS example demo folder. Lastly, I wanna show you how you can create your own custom functions so that you can apply this same process to any folder we're going to combine all these little code chunks into two custom functions, one for cleaning file names and two for moving those files into an R folder, a data folder, and a reports folder. First, we're going to create our messy directory again, dir create fs example, create our files, and then create those files in the fs example again. Our first custom function is clean file names. It has just one argument called folder. This folder contains files that need to be renamed according to this consistent case. First, we're going to use the dir ls function to get all of the old file paths and names within this folder. We're going to use the string r functions to change this file's old vector into files new. And we're going to make everything lowercase, replace all the spaces and underscores with dashes. There are other ways you can do this besides string r. You can add additional changes if you wanted everything uppercase, or if you wanted to use snake case and underscores instead of hyphens. You could easily adjust this custom function to fit your needs in your workflow. The last part of this function is going to be actually renaming those files with the file move function. And again, we're replacing the old file names with the new file names. If we load and then run the function, pay attention to this files pane because you're going to see it update with all lowercase dashes instead of spaces and underscores. Our second custom function is called organize files. 
And it also accepts one argument called folder, which will be the folder that you want to create subfolders for and move your files into. We're first going to create this vector with the names of the subfolders we want. Then we're going to actually create those subfolders. Then we're going to get lists of the file paths and names that end in the correct extensions. When you're customizing this function, you can easily add other data file types that you might use in your work. You could add our markdown instead of Cordo. So what's different here for when we actually move the files into their appropriate subfolder is because this folder argument is a basic string and is not an actual path. We have to get a little bit fancy. We're going to use the str string glue function to add the folder as a string. And then the path function will actually make that a file path. This path function is also from the FS package and it will cr construct the path to a file or directory. If we load this function and then hop back over to our files, we can again see that we have our renamed files, but they're not yet in their subfolders. Once we run this organize files custom function, we can see now that we have an R folder with our R scripts, data folder with our CSVs, and our reports with our PDF and QMD files. If we wanted to again see the directory tree, we could render a tree. Again, we see our nice, beautiful tree with our R folder with our R scripts, data folder with CSVs and reports with PDFs and QMDs. Once again, we will just clean up by using the dir delete function, a refresh, and we no longer have that folder. I hope you can adopt these code snippets or these custom functions to fit your own workflow and your own preferences for file naming and organization. And hopefully this automation can make your life a little bit easier. Remember that you can always see more information by reading through the corresponding blog post that will be linked in the description below on YouTube. Thanks so much, and we will see you next time.